Hello, hello friends. I'm here to read a few more chapters of Heartwood Hotel. Last we left off, Mona the Mouse was looking for a new home and she found a big tree and traced some initials she saw on it. As she was tracing the initials that were carved into the tree, a secret door opened. Mm, okay, so chapter two, the Acorn Festival. With a squeak of wonder, Mona stepped inside to warmth, light, and the delicious smell of roasted acorns. The room was large, very large for a mouse, big enough for a group of small animals to gather. Across from the door was a stone hearth, unlit but decorated with a garland of colorful leaves. A mossy rug lay in front of it, surrounded by a couch and chairs made of twigs which were lined with more moss. To the left stood a large wooden desk with a big book and twig pencil on it, and from the ceiling hung rings of candles casting a soft golden glow. Mona had never seen such a fancy place. Who lives here? she wondered, but there was no one around to tell her. Here is a picture of what she was seeing. Hmm. There was a faint sound of music and laughter, however, coming from beneath the hearth. Mona took a few more steps into the room and spied an open doorway near the fireplace. The sound was coming from in there. Mona started in that direction, but paused. She was a mouse after all and she had to be careful. She sniffed cautiously. The smell of roasted acorns was stronger now. Surely animals who ate roasted acorns weren't a threat. And then, out of the corner of her eye, she noticed a sign above the hearth. She hadn't seen it before because it was half covered by the garland of leaves. She could just make out what it said. We live by Protect and respect, not by tooth and claw. Relieved, Mona followed her nose and ears through the doorway, down a short hallway decorated with more garlands, and to another door, a much larger one with a plaque on it that read, Ballroom. It was slightly ajar, enough so Mona could slip through. Inside was another marvelous sight, and a much more lively one. Rabbits, chipmunks, squirrels, hedgehogs, birds, even a lizard. And largest of all, a badger. Not muddy or wet like her, but dressed up and dancing, eating and laughing. Mona clutched her suitcase tightly and looked around in awe. She had only ever encountered a few animals at a time in the forest, never so many all in one place. Against one wall was a table stacked with food. Mushrooms, juniper berries, licorice roots, and acorns. Oh, the acorns! Mashed, steamed, fried, souped. So many types that Mona didn't recognize many of them. And in the center of the table, a giant honeycomb with cups beside it to scoop out the honey and drink. Not far from the table, Above a small stage was a banner. The first acorn festival. Celebrate autumn's arrival. And on the stage, three beautiful dark bluebirds crooned. Their song came to an end and the room filled with applause. Thank you, thank you, one of the singers said. We are the Blue Bow Wobblers and we're honored to be singing our final concert here before our flight south. We're happy so many of you can make it, despite the storm. And now, though it's raining outside, we can make it sunny in here with one of our favorite melodies, Moonshine Sunrise. More applause filled the room and whistles and cheers too, as the birds burst into another tune and the dancing started again. Mona's mind raced. Where are all these animals staying? Here? Where had they come from? 
Her thoughts were interrupted by a voice. Hello, Miss Mouse. A lizard stepped in front of her and gave a short bow. Were you searching for help at the front desk? My apologies, my name is Giles. How may I help you? Mona noticed he was wearing a bow tie around his neck and a large key which was made of wood and had a heart shape on top. He was exceedingly clean, a glistening green, as though his scales had been polished, and he seemed hesitant to get too close to the muddy puddle that had collected at the wood floor around Mona's feet. I, I, stammered Mona. I'm afraid we're full tonight. Booking for the Acorn Festival took place months ago. Why, we were overrun with messenger jays bringing room requests. You should have sent one yourself. Mona found her voice. I, I didn't know. I've never been here before. Where, where am I? Where are you? Why, Miss Mouse, this is the Hartwood Hotel. What is that? asked Mona. Only the finest hotel for forests around, exclaimed Giles. The Hartwood Hotel has roomed such guests at the Speed Race Champion, Randolph the Rabbit, and the Duchess Squirrel, Henrietta III. It has hosted weddings of the richest skunks in the forest and boasts festivals for every season. Not to mention its reputation for rest and relaxation. The lizard's tongue flicked in and out as he continued. Why, no other spot can guarantee protection from wolves, coyotes, and cougars. Sleep in safety, eat in earnest, and be happy at Hartwood. That's Mr. Hartwood's motto. One of many, actually. Please don't tell Mr. Hartwood you haven't heard of us. He will blame the Pinecone Press. They have yet to review us. Reviews of French hotels, reviews of Italian ones, but of Hartwood, none as of yet. The Pinecone Press, said a booming voice. Is this the elusive reviewer at last? Joining them at the door was none other than the largest animal in the room, and perhaps the oldest too, Mona guessed from the stoop of his shoulders. It was the badger with glossy black fur and a smart jacket and vest. Not just one, but an entire set of wooden keys hung around his huge neck. Mona trembled. Badgers were not always kind to mice. And this one gazed down upon her with a particularly stern look. Oh, no, sir, said Giles. This is not reviewer. This is Miss, he paused. I don't believe I caught your name. Mona, she said. Miss Mona is here for a room, but I've told her we're booked, Mr. Hartwood, sir, said Giles. Ah, oh, I see. The badger sniffed, his great nostrils fanning out wide. Mona swallowed hard. Oh, please, I have no place to stay. My home was washed out in the storm. Please, I, I think there are wolves out there. Not nearby, certainly, huffed the badger. We never see those beasts in this part of the forest. They live in the great woods beyond the Fernwood foothills. N no, they weren't nearby, replied Mona. She had seen the wolves before the stream had carried her away. They had been in the Fern... Had they been in the Fernwood hills? foothills? She didn't know the parts of the forest and what they were called. There is the picture. Mr. Hartwood, Giles, and Mona talking in the ballroom. Hmm. I see, the badger said again, twirling his white whiskers on the side of his cheeks. His gaze caught her suitcase and he peered closer. A heart. What a coincidence. He looked back at her intently. I've always had it, said Mona. It belonged to my family. And where are they now? I lost them a long time ago in a big storm like this one. You did, did you? Mr. Hartwood tugged his whiskers, his eyes concerned. And so storms strike not once, but twice. He looked like he might say something more, but he simply gave his whiskers an extra hard tug and then looked back at the party and glanced down to the floor 
which was messy with bits of food. Ah, crumbs. We have more than a few. A night for a night that we could do. You're a small sort of helper, but an extra paw is an extra paw. Giles, make it be. Take her to Tilly. Then with a nod and a toothless grin, Mr. Hartwood returned to mingling for the with the guests. Well, I say, the lizard's tail twitched. What did he mean? I don't understand, piped Mona. Mr. Hartwood will let you stay for the night if you are willing to clean up after the party with Tilly, our maid. Probably mentioning the wolves helped. Mr. Hartwood has a soft spot for any small animal in trouble, and he especially dislikes wolves. His wife was taken by them, you know, while she was on a journey to visit her sister. That's why he started the hotel, to create a safe place for animals, especially traveling ones, to stay. But sometimes I think he forgets that it is a hotel, not a safe haven for every wet whisker that comes by. Of course, I don't mean to disrespect you, Miss Mouse. In any case, you better come with me. Oh, thank you, said Mona. Don't thank me yet, J said Giles, opening the door wide. You haven't met Tilly. And that's the end of that chapter. Ah, this is such a cute book. I really kind of hope Mona gets to stay. I mean, I know it's a hotel. You can't just decide to live at a hotel, but I don't know. Maybe she'll get a job. Who's to say? I haven't read the book um, yet. We're reading it together, friends. We're reading it together. All right, I hope you're liking it so far. If you are, let me know. Talk to me in the halls of the school when you see me. Call my name, Miss Sarah, I wanna chat. Let's talk about it. Um, I'll see you next time, and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.